Okay, in this video, we are going to do the scalar line integral of one over the quantity x squared plus y squared plus one um, ds, so arc length, where c is shown in the figure. So this is a piecewise linear, and there are four different curves that we're gonna go around, or four different um, line segments. So first thing I'm gonna do is uh, label those. So we got c1, c2, c3, c4. So what we want to do is find all four of those line integrals and then just add them up. So let's, I'm going to write that down. So over C1 we're going to go, ds, and then over C2, and then over C3, and then over C4. So um, it's going to be a lot of work. So let's, let's see. Um, first, I'm going to write down all the curves. So they're all linear, which is good because I can write them all as sort of a, uh, so for C1, for example, uh, you start at x equals 0, you end at x equals 1. So your delta x is 1, and it's going to be um, x is equal to 0 plus 1 times t. So x is equal to t. But what's nice is that y is just 0 the entire way. So y is 0. Um, and then our t-bounds are going to be 0 to 1. And when you write your linear parameterizations that way, your t-bounds are always 0 to 1, which is good because it makes your substitutions a little easier at the end. Um, so C2. X is actually always equal to 1. Um, and then when you're looking at Y, you go from 0 to 1. So it's going to be 0 plus delta Y is 1 and then times t. So just Y equals t. And again, our bounds are 0 to 1. And we're going to keep going. So C3, um, x starts at 1 and ends up at 0. So our delta x is negative 1. So it's going to be 1 minus t. And then for y, it's just always 1 on that particular part. And we're going to go from 0 to 1 again. And then finally, on this bound, uh, x is equal to 0 the entire way. And then y starts at 1 and ends at 0. So our delta y is negative 1. So it's going to be... Uh, 1 minus t, and then again from 0 to 1. All right, so those are our four paths. And what I'm going to do now is I'm actually just going to calculate ds for each of these paths so that I can kind of like substitute and see what's happening. So um, ds, if you remember, is uh, it's like the magnitude of r prime of t dt. So um, I need to find dx dt, dy dt, square them, add them together, take the square root, and then put a dt after it. So for the first path, dx dt is 1, dy dt is 0. So um, you actually just get 1 times dt. So ds is just dt. And if you look at it, for the next one, dx dt is 0, dy dt is 1. So again, you just get ds is dt. For the next one, you get dx dt is negative 1, dy dt is 0. But since you're squaring, negative 1 squared is 1, uh, 0 squared is 0. Add them up, you get 1. So again, we're just going to get ds is dt. And then the same argument applies to c4. So in each case, ds is just equal to dt, which makes our life a lot easier on this problem. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite all of these as um, I'm going to do all my substitutions. So uh, for c1, for example. Uh, ds is just dt, x is equal to t, so I'm going to get t squared, y is equal to 0, so that drops out, so I get the integral from 0 to 1 of dt over t squared plus 1. And I'm going to keep going, so for the next one, x is 1, so 1 squared is 1, y is equal to t, so t squared, so in the denominator I'm going to have t squared plus 2, and then ds is dt, so it's going to be the integral 0 to 1 dt over t squared plus 2. Let's move on to the next one. So here, um, I'm going to end up with the quantity 1 minus t squared plus 1 plus 1, and then dt on the top. So integral 0 to 1, quantity 1 minus t squared, 1 plus 1 is 2, and that's our integral. So that one's a little weird looking. Um, and then c4, same substitutions, x is 0, which is nice. We'll get the quantity 1 minus t squared plus 1, ds is dt. So 0 to 1 dt over quantity 1 minus t squared plus 1. OK, so we've got all four of these. Now we need to evaluate them. If you're looking at those and thinking there's going to be a lot of arctan involved, you're definitely right. So here we go. I'm going to do them each individually. So the first one is nice because it's like classic arctan. 
Um, I usually like to write it as one plus tan squared in the denominator, but it doesn't matter. So this is actually just arc tan. We're gonna go from zero to one. Um, so that's gonna be the arc tan of one minus the arc tan of zero. Now you gotta remember your arc tans. The arc tan of one is pi over four and the arc tan of zero is zero. So this is actually just pi over four. So far so good. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rewrite the next one. So what I'm doing is factoring a two out of everything in the denominator. And then I'm gonna kind of rearrange it. So if I factor a two out of t squared, I end up with t squared over two. And then I'm gonna write that as the quantity t over radical two squared. And you'll get to see what that looks like right now. So I take a one half out and then dt, one plus the quantity t over radical two all squared. If you, um, you know, square that and then redistribute, you'll see you get the exact same thing. Uh, this is, so I'm going to do kind of a U substitution in my head. So U is T over radical two. So the derivative of that is one over radical two. So I need a radical two, a one over radical two on the inside, which puts a radical two on the outside. And if you don't like any of that, actually just do the U substitution. But I get radical two over two, arctan of T over radical two. Gonna go from zero to one. And so just show this. This one's a little deceptive because it kind of feels like maybe you're gonna get a famous angle, but you kind of don't. So I'm gonna get one over radical two. I'm gonna rationalize that to be radical two over two because at this point I was kind of thinking this would be famous, um, but it's actually not. I don't know what angle that is. Uh, so this arctan of zero is still zero. So this is actually just radical two over two arctan of radical two over two. All right, so that's kind of ugly, but nothing we can do about it. Uh, for the next one, I'm going to do sort of the same thing. I'm gonna factor a two out of everything in the denominator. I'm gonna turn that one minus t squared over two. I'm gonna make that the quantity one minus t over radical two all squared, and maybe also rearrange it so it looks like I like arctan to look. So there's gonna be a one half on the outside, and then all that stuff I talked about. So one plus t minus one over radical two squared. And again, if you want, you can expand that and distribute and you'll see you get an equivalent expression. This also, when you take the, if you do a U substitution, T minus one over radical two, um, you get a one over radical two on the inside. So you need a radical two on the outside. So I end up with radical two over two, arctan of that weird U value, T minus one over radical two. Again, from zero to one. When you plug in zero, uh, well, when you plug in one this time, you actually get zero. So we're gonna get the arctan of zero and then uh, minus the arctan of, when you plug in zero, you get negative one over radical two. I'm gonna rationalize that to be negative radical two over two. Uh, now I gotta kind of think about this. So uh, arctan is actually an odd function, which means that the arctan of negative, I don't know, x is equal to the negative of arctan of x. So this is actually the same as, so negative 10 inverse of negative radical two over two is the same as negative, negative 10 inverse of positive radical two over two, which means this whole thing cleans up to radical two over two, arc 10 of radical two over two. Very convenient because we also got that in the previous line integral. And one more. Um, so this one, I'm just gonna kind of rearrange. And then uh, the quantity one minus t squared is the same as t minus one squared. Work it out if you don't believe me. So I'm gonna reorder this, but that's all I'm gonna do. Okay, so if u is t minus one, then du is dt, and this one's perfect. So this is just gonna be arctan of t minus one from zero to one. We're gonna substitute. So we get arctan of zero when you plug in one um, minus the arctan of negative one which is famous and I have it memorized, so I'm not gonna think of it as an odd function. I'm just gonna think the arctan of zero is zero, the arctan of negative one is negative pi over four, so I have zero minus negative pi over four, which overall just gives me negative, negative pi over four, which is pi over four. Okay, so a lot going on here. Um, so we're finding this one line integral overall, right? And we're just doing it by adding up four different line integrals. And so here I got, pi over four and pi over four, which is just pi over two when you add them. And then here I got uh, this and this. And if you add those together, you actually, it's like half of it and half of it. So you just end up with uh, radical two, arctan of, arctan of radical two over two. And that's our final answer. So 
Uh, we had a p-size and linear path. We went all the way around. It was actually a closed path, but that's not really relevant in this problem. Uh, you just do four separate line integrals and add them up. A lot of arctan. Uh, I hope you found this helpful, and good luck.